Welcome into the Inside Carolina podcast. I'm your host, Ross Martin, and we are joined by a very special guest. Uh, today, we bring on UNC assistant strength conditioning coach, John Heck, former UNC offensive lineman and has returned to UNC now for a couple of years, three or four years uh, on the staff here at UNC uh, with the football team. What's going on, John? Not too much, man. Happy to be on the show. Awesome. As always, remember to rate, review, and subscribe. And we want to definitely shout out our um, sponsor, Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyT-Shirt.com. All right, John. So I want to bring on John because I've been interested in his kind of path uh, to UNC, his role at UNC, and kind of his journey as uh, a massive dude who who is very active on Instagram and very, um, I don't know, influential and, and gives a lot of advice about nutrition and strength conditioning. And it's definitely an interesting story in a different part of kind of the UNC football program that I'm interested in. So let's start, John. You played at UNC for five seasons. Were you there five or six? Uh, redshirted and then started uh, the last four years. Mm -hmm. And you're an all-ACC player um, under Larry Fedora and Coach, uh, Coach Cap. After UNC, what brought you back to UNC? What did you do to get to where you are now? Uh, I know you're with the Carolina Panthers some. Um, and can you kind of talk us through your path after you graduated and left UNC? Kind of started going into my senior season uh, playing at UNC. Early on in the season, I actually made the decision that when the season ended that I was, I was going to be done with football, at least as a player. Um, and that was a, it was a tough decision, uh, you know, growing up the son of, you know, a former NFL player and current NFL offensive line coach, just growing up in a football family and my entire life, football was my life. And that was kind of my identity. Uh, all my friends were my teammates or guys were at least involved in the sport. Um, but, you know, I kind of got to a point where playing football was not really my passion anymore. And I'd kind of started to realize that over the years, you know, I was, I was always just good at it. I was uh, obviously, you know, had the size for it. So I kind of, you know, fell into the sport and uh, just progressed through the ranks. And, um, but I reached a certain point where I was like, you know, my real passions are, are in the training side of this, like the, the summer strength and conditioning portion of, uh, of the football year was, I mean, that was like my in season for me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the, the actual football is like my off season. Um, I was always looking forward to summer with, uh, with coach Lou. Um, so I started to realize that I, I just wanted to pursue strength and conditioning um, when I graduated. So made the decision early on in my senior year that when the season ended, I wasn't going to do a, a, you know, the combine wasn't going to do the senior bowl or a pro day or any of that stuff. I was going to go right to work and I wanted to start competing in powerlifting. So uh, we played, uh, we played Stanford in the Sun Bowl mm -hmm. in 2016. And then uh, when that game ended, I, I knew that was it. I was done. Uh, so I, um, I got an internship at a place, uh, a training facility called D1 Sports Training in Raleigh. Um, there's several of them located throughout the country. Uh, you know, it's a, a facility where a lot of guys go train for their pro day, train for the combine, a lot of high school athletes. Um, and I started competing in powerlifting. So I, I was there for a year. Um, and then I got hired by the Carolina Panthers. Um, I spent a year working with their staff and, um, I was lucky enough to work for one of the, the best strength and conditioning coaches in the game. His name is Joe Ken. Um, he's kind of one of the, uh, the OGs in the, in the field. And, um, you know, I, I credit so much of what I know uh, to him. So I had a great experience working with the Panthers. And then a, uh, a position opened up at UNC. And, um, you know, I, it kind of felt right. It was, it was at a moment where I was looking for, a, you know, looking for a job. Um, I just finished up with the Panthers and um, UNC came calling and I went over there and uh, it worked out and I've been there ever since. And so you were hired by Fed <clears throat> Fedora, right? It was uh, the Fedora staff when I got hired there. Okay, great. And then, so how long have you been there? Is this your fourth year? Season, yep. Okay, um, awesome. So, and then uh, obviously, you know, for Fedora leaves and bring on Mac Brown and you're working underneath Brian Hess. And I think Brian Hess is kind of this, I don't know, the, the, the message boards and everybody really enjoys what he does. And he brings a unique kind of um, atmosphere to strength conditioning. What's it been like working underneath him, um, wor working with him? And what's kind of the, the strength conditioning like right now? We'll get into a little bit more details on that. I mean, I feel like everyone kind of says, oh, we have the, you know, the best strength and conditioning staff in the country, yeah. this and that. But uh, 
I, I genuinely mean it when I say I think he is the best strength and conditioning coach in college football. I mean, he uh, he came into that program and he changed everything. I mean, he has made myself and the rest of our staff better coaches. Uh, he has brought so much to this program. Uh, he's a great X's and O's coach, just in terms of you know, the program inside of things, the actual coaching. But then he just brings a certain energy and a certain just sincere genuine side to him that I think all the players really, really relate to. And he really clicks with all the guys. And, you know, he, he's just someone who he's a very unique character and he's completely mm -hmm. himself. You know, I know you've had, a, he's been on the podcast and he's, you know, done lots of speaking engagements and stuff. I don't think, uh, I don't think people get to see the true side of him. You know, he, uh, he, he's a lot more subdued when he's in a setting like a podcast or something like that. But when we're, when he's coaching on the floor with us, we've, we've got all the boys in there. I mean, he, he flips a switch and I mean, he just brings a, a crazy positive energy that, and uh, he's a, one of the best motivators I've been around. Um, but, at the, you know, he does it all while at the same time being a very intelligent coach and with a great, an incredibly well-programmed system. And I mean, we, uh, we've gotten really complex with the system. I mean, we have, uh, you know, at any one time in the weight room, we'll have six different programs running all based on, you know, different position groups, uh, you know, certain injury limitations, different body types, things like that. So, I mean, uh, it's, uh, I'm lucky to work for him. Yeah. So what are some of the major changes you noticed in kind of, you said the X's and O's kind of the layout of the program. I mean, what's the, I know, cause yeah, I'm sure different things work for different programs, different people, but what stands out from what he does that you really like, or you think works really well, maybe one example or two that um, you kind of change in how the actual structure of the strength conditioning program works at Carolina. Something that I just touched on a little bit, which is, you know, you look at a lot of strength programs, a lot of around the country, you'll see kind of everyone doing the same thing, all the various position groups doing the same types of conditioning, doing the same things in the weight room. Whereas with us, we've gotten to a point now where we have divided the team up into several different programs. I mean, we have a quarterback program. We have a program for the freshmen who just got on campus. Mm -hmm. We have an advanced program for some of the older guys who have been in the system longer, who, uh, you know, we're not necessarily trying to just develop true top end strength of those guys anymore. We're just trying to make them more powerful, kind of fine tune their abilities. Um, then we've got kind of the base program, you know, we, the the base team program that the majority of the guys are on, but that in and of itself is divided into inside the box, the big guys, mm -hmm. linemen, linebackers, and then outside the box, all the skill positions. Um, so, you know, we've gotten, you know, just having the team divided up to where everyone is training with a program that is very much specific to them, their individual needs. Uh, to me, that's kind of the, the, you know, there's several positive changes we've made, but to me, that's the one that really stands out. And the way y'all lift and the way you work out day to day, I just remember initially when he got to campus, it was about maybe more about flexibility. That was a little bit of change. I noticed in how the players talked, a focus more on maybe um, less weight, but different types of lifts that help people's mobility and injury prevention. Can you speak to that? Um, how important the, the, the flexibility and stretching is and also additionally injury prevention. Um, I, I do notice a, a difference in that. Now it could be luck whatever but your thoughts on first the flexibility and how that's worked into the system you all use and then injury prevention and how those two work together and i guess warming up too is a big part too yeah i mean that was literally what i was just gonna say yeah. i mean we we put so much emphasis on keeping these guys healthy and, and putting a focus on recovery making sure these guys are prepared to train in every session and then with you know adding in a you know, a huge mobility component to everything we do. And like you just touched on, it starts with our warm up. I mean, we've got a pretty advanced warm up. I mean, we spend a significant portion uh, of our lift time, you know, just getting these guys prepared to lift and uh, making sure that they're primed and completely ready um, to train hard. And then when we do train, we put a huge emphasis on movement quality. We're not a staff that's just going to load the bar at all costs, just move heavy weight from point A to point B. We're not number chasers. Uh, we are constantly hammering quality movement for our guys when they squat. We are hammering, you know, squatting to depth with proper posture and proper breathing and bracing, proper mechanics uh, when they sprint. I mean, every single thing we do within our training, it all starts with making sure that they are doing it with perfect movement patterns. 
Um, and then we, uh, at the end of every lift, we'll finish up, we call it post work. Um, we'll go through a whole mobility series. And I've got to give a lot of credit to uh, one of our coaches on staff, Miles Brown. He kind of leads the, the mobility side of everything we do. Um, and that's made a huge difference for our guys. You know, I think when Coach Hess came in, we had a lot of guys that were stiff. Um, you know, we, in the previous program, we, had, we were, it was a very heavy lifting program. Um, mobility wasn't necessarily an emphasis. And uh, I think that leads to a lot of injuries, a lot of issues. Um, and, and now that we've made that a huge focus, uh, you know, I think we see that reflected in, in um, cutting back on those injuries. And do y'all do anything, um, I guess, unique or different that people want to realize a football strength and conditioning program does? I know like something like yoga or swimming or incorporating something different that's a little bit outside the box that, that has brought or any of the coaches have brought to um, the program? Yeah, so I mean, I think within our within our lifting, I mean, we do some some pretty advanced stuff. I mean, I don't want to say any of it is completely unique. I mean, we certainly didn't come up with any of it um, ourselves. I mean, everything we do, you'll see you'll see other strength coaches doing some of it around the country. But I think the way we've kind of you know taken so many different things and brought it all under our program from the mobility to, uh, you know, how complex we can get with our programming, with our lifting. I mean, you know, you come into our weight room and you'll see us, our guys squatting with chains on the bar with uh, mm -hmm. tendo units on the bar, tendo units, a bar accelerometer, it measures the bar velocity. Um, it, so we get, we get very in depth with the programming. And uh, so I wouldn't say there's anything, any one particular thing that is, is completely unique that we do, but I think it's just the, you know, the amount of different things that we do and bring it all together in a way that just meshes and flows under our, under our program. I, I think that's pretty unique. Awesome. And what, what's your role? Like I know certain coaches work with different positions. Um, what is your role? Cause I, th I think you don't work with one position, but you oh, go ahead. You just tell me. I work with our big men primarily. Okay. Um, so I'll work with all of our offensive defensive linemen or outside linebackers. Um, okay. so I'll be working with them, uh, through their lifting, through their speed work, their conditioning, all that good stuff. Um, and then I'll play a role with, uh, nutrition with our team. Okay. Let's get to that nutrition. What, um, what is your role in nutrition and we'll go from there. Yeah. So first and foremost, I got to give a lot of credit to our dietitian staff, you know, Kelsey, um, and her staff, they do an amazing job and, um, they handle, the nutrition side of things for the guys, for their breakfast, their lunch, their dinner, kind of their day-to-day -day meals. Uh, then on the strength staff, um, we'll handle some of the nutrition side of things as far as some of the supplements that they take before they lift, some of the things that we'll be giving them while they lift and after they lift. Um, you know, we, uh, we kind of brought in, uh, we, we call them fill the blood shakes. We, uh, you know, we have a saying, we want our guys training with full blood. You know, it's kind of a misconception that when you're lifting, when you're training, that's when you're getting bigger. That's when you're getting stronger. You're actually breaking down the muscle tissue when you train. Uh, so when our, our guys come in, we'll have a, the whole countertop and the nutrition station lined with pre-made shakes. We call them fill the blood shakes because they're full of the, uh, the nutrients that um, when they drink that shake, it gets into the bloodstream and it starts building up that, that broken down tissue while they're training. So we'll have, uh, we'll have those shakes out ready for them before they train. Uh, we'll be giving them electrolyte supplements, uh, vasodilators to uh, improve blood flow and circulation and um, things like that. And then post-workout, they, they uh, come over to the nutrition station again. We've got protein shakes for them, bars, beef jerky, nuts, high-calorie foods for them. And uh, so we kind of um, handle the, uh, the pre, intra, and post-workout nutrition. And so your role is kind of more like in the weight room right after and before lifts, Correct. kind of giving them the, the, the protein, whatever stuff they need uh, during yep. that. Um, okay. So let's say you're trying to bulk up an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, or even like a linebacker who needs to add 20 pounds outside linebackers like that. What would be your, let's say you got a month, like what's the, what would you tell them to eat and do to put on significant weight in the off season heading into the season? Let's get a little John Heck nutrition advice, someone looking to bulk up and, and, and assuming that they're doing all the lifts and all the stuff necessary um, that the team right. is recommending. So typically the, the biggest issue I see for a lot of these guys, um, at least at this level, the guys who struggle to gain weight is they need to eat more frequently throughout the day. They need to eat more frequent meals. You know, a lot of these guys, um, 
you know, they're obviously coming out of high school. They're, they're not used to any sort of a structured nutrition program. Um, a lot of these guys are just kind of used to eating twice a day. And uh, that, that's something that's going to slow down your metabolism. Um, it's tough to get the calories in when you're not eating frequently throughout the day. So the biggest thing, the biggest change that I try to make with the guys who need to gain weight is find out how many meals a day are they eating and then add a couple meals on top of that. So if they're eating just two or three, okay, let's bump that up to four or five meals a day. You know, I, I don't want to just get to a point where we're saying, all right, let's just load up your plate with as much food as we can possibly pile onto it. You know, because what that does is it, it creates digestive issues. You know, they say you are what you eat, but in reality, you, you're not just what you, you eat. You are what you can actually digest, and process, metabolize, and assimilate. And if you're eating foods or eating amounts that you can't properly digest, okay, well, it's, you're not actually reaping the benefits from those calories. Right. Um, so having more frequent meals, you know, smaller frequent meals allows them to get all those calories in throughout the day, but allows them to do so in a way where they can actually digest those meals properly. And they're not, you know, not going into a training session bogged down by some massive meal that they just ate. Whereas instead they've eaten two or three smaller meals coming into that lift. They've digested it well, but they've gotten a ton of calories in. Uh, so that's the first change that I make. So it's not necessarily what you eat or how much it's kind of when you eat it throughout the, uh, throughout the day. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it, it's a calorie equation. I mean, yeah. if you want to gain weight, you have to be in a calorie surplus, just the way I go about trying to help a guy get into a calorie surplus is instead of just piling on as much food as possible in any one particular sitting, just adding in more additional meals throughout the day. What's your favorite kind of protein? Red meat, clean red meat. <laughs> Why? And, you know, I, uh, well, I mean, first of all, I'm a big proponent of whole food protein sources as opposed to, uh, you know, the powders and, and the pre-made shakes and everything like that. Those have a place. They're convenient. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your animal proteins, your actual meat that has all the, the different cofactors and enzymes and minerals and vitamins in it that your body is just going to have a better time actually digesting and assimilating and utilizing. Um, and then I'm a fan of red meat. It just has a great amino acid profile relative to something like chicken. Um, it's going to have, be a better source of natural creatine and B vitamins and, uh, and healthy fats. Um, so you get a lot of, you know, red meat's going to be a better bang for your buck than something like chicken breast or a, or a fish or shrimp or something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm in all big, I'm on a big salmon kick right now. Is that, yeah, salmon's great. Salmon's great. Right. Um, you know, salmon's going to be any any source of meat that is, is loaded with healthy fats. I'm a big fan. So salmon um, and, and then lean red meat. Um, so beef or bison. I'm a huge bison fan. Um, and, and if you can get grass fed sources of red meat, even better. OK, outside of meat, what's your what do you think is the best kind of protein source to say you're vegan? Let's say you're vegetarian and you need that protein. Um, what do you like to eat in, in that way? If you even do. I mean, that might be offensive to ask you to eat a non-meat. No. Uh, so, I mean, I personally don't subscribe to a you know vegan, uh, vegan or vegetarian diet. But for those who do, um, there are very good vegan protein powders out there. Um, and then incorporating, you know, foods that fit within a vegan or vegetarian diet, like black beans or tofu. Uh, things like that. Those are going to be good sources of protein. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, one of the, the major pitfalls of a vegan or vegetarian diet is that it is harder to get in those complete protein sources. Mm -hmm. um, so that might be the toughest question you've ever been asked to, to think outside of, of meat. As a <laughs> well, I, I, I run a nutrition business on the side. So I, I've got a, you know, I work with a lot of people who are outside of the, uh, you know, the, the athlete demographic. So yeah. no, I, uh, I work with all sorts of people and all sorts oh. of different diets. Interesting. All right. We're gonna get back into it. Talk more about, um, John as a person and his goals. He's in a strong, uh, strong man competitions, power lifting, uh, a little bit more about UNC and the strength conditioning program. But first I'll talk to you briefly about Johnny t-shirt and giant t-shirt.com. They're inside Carolina's podcast sponsor right on Franklin street and online at giant t-shirt.com. Uh, they provide, access to all your UNC apparel, 
get a t-shirt, get a sweatshirt, a jersey for the upcoming season. It's going to be a great time to be rocking Carolina gear for the 2021 UNC football season. Johnny T-shirt and giantteacher.com. We really want to thank them for their support of our podcast. And in turn, they allow us to, to provide you with these type of podcasts with new uh, type of guests, our regular podcasts to run throughout the week and all the special interviews, interviews we do do. So Inside Carolina and Johnny T-shirt and giantteacher.com. And remember, all Inside Carolina subscribers to the premium message boards can get the 10% off discount code right on the message board. Use that for your purchase and get a little bit of discount to help you as you pack your closet, your tailgating scene, your house with all your UNC stuff, Johnny T-shirt and johnnytshirt.com. We'll be right back with some national ads and we'll be right back with John Heck. And we're back with John Heck, UNC, former UNC offensive lineman and current UNC strength and conditioning coach. Um, all right, a couple more things about UNC uh, before we get into kind of more what you do personally. What's it like working with AJ Blue? I, mean, I think he's another kind of fan favorite. We remember him as a player. Um, he's pretty active on social media as well. We, we see him in some of the hype videos uh, off and on. Uh, I know you obviously spent a lot of time with him. What's it like working with, uh, with AJ? So uh, Blue and I were teammates. Um, we played together for a couple of years. Um, and, and he was always, he always had a very, very good leadership presence in the locker room. And that is something that he has brought to this program as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, I mean, he is, he is one of the greatest motivators I've ever been around. And he has a way of just clicking with our guys and, and getting the most out of our guys. Um, it, it's a gift that he has that not a lot of people have. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that I think separates him as a coach, just his ability to take any guy from any background and, uh, and really mesh with that guy and get the absolute most out of him in, in training. And then he's just a guy who the entire team respects the entire team looks up to, and uh, he just brings a certain energy on game day that, that's unmatched. And I mean, you know, just listening to his pregame speeches, I mean, he makes me want, want to run through a brick wall. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been awesome having him on staff. Does he do one before every game? Is that kind of, he gets one of the pregame speeches? Yeah, so, I mean, there was a time um, where he gave one before every game. Um, right now, he kind of, he'll break it out when, it, when it's a big one, when the team needs it. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Um, and is, I know like, is this Hess? Let me see. Let me start with this. We see the sideline and it's like, I feel like the strength conditioning coaches are like, they have a couple different roles on game day. It's like hold back guy. It's like, get the players back guy. Um, motivating for sure. Can you kind of go through? Cause like your y'all's work is done during the week. It's during the off season. It's during practices uh, on game day. Where do you see your role? I guess, obviously from warming up, and getting ready for the game um, and then all the pregame stuff, but then also during the game. Can you kind of give us a glimpse into that life and what you're really doing? So, uh, game day, the guys roll in from the hotel. And uh, once they're in, then we start warming them up. We'll be stretching guys. You know, each guy, each coach on staff kind of has their own group of guys who've kind of gravitated towards them to be the ones that, that we stretch certain guys. Um, and then we'll be helping them out with their nutrition, you know, their hydration, all that stuff before they hit the field. Uh, once we get out on the field, we warm up the team. Uh, and then once the game starts from there, we are, we're the get back coaches. And then, uh, we're just, we're just bringing the energy bus, you know? Um, so we, uh, you know, our, our team's pretty good about not, uh, not creeping onto the field too much. And some of the coaches <laughs> we have to keep an eye on more, um, making sure we're not getting the, getting a sideline warning or anything like that. But other than that, I mean, it's just bringing energy. And uh, that's something that coach Hess and coach blue do better than anyone I've ever seen. Yeah. So. I remember seeing Hess, like, I mean, he just yells. Um, I remember getting home with someone getting a, it was like, it was like a fight. Y'all had a little scuffle at pit and he was just yelling to the air. He was so jacked up. <laughs> I remember I filmed that video. Um, yeah, I have, I have a I have a still shot picture of him mid scream, and I, I was trying to make trying to make a t shirt out of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he brings that energy, and it's so genuine. The guys love it. That's awesome. Um, so in recruiting, uh, I know y'all have had a bunch of visitors this uh, this month, and obviously we can't talk about 
uh, actual names, but what is y'all's role on like a recruiting visit on like an official visit? Are you, are you talking with the, with maybe the, the player's coach, the player's parents, the player, can you give us a glimpse of that? Cause that's something I don't, I don't really know y'all's role in that. I'm sure you do have a role though. Yeah, we do. I feel like we've given like a hundred weight room <laughs> presentations to recruits here in the past three weeks. We, uh, so recruits will be, you know, throughout the month of June, recruits are rolling in throughout the day uh, with their families. Um, so anytime that we have a recruit, um, we'll be ready in the weight room and each member on our staff, we will have a different speaking role and, and cover a different topic. So recruit and their family come in. We'll start with me. I'll cover the nutrition around training. Uh, we take into the weight room. Coach Hess will kind of give an overview of our program as a whole, kind of what it, it'll look like uh, from the time that the recruit steps on campus to the time they leave, what that progression kind of looks like for them. Uh, Coach Dean, uh, Dean Meggie, will talk about the GPS system and then the, uh, the advanced group that he works with. Uh, Miles Brown will talk about the mobility side of things. Uh, Blue will talk that he works with the quarterbacks, our return to play guys, and then he oversees a lot of our speed work, so he'll touch on that. Um, and then I'll talk about conditioning and field work for, for the linemen. That's so uh, they, can, uh, they come in, we, we go around, we give, we give all our talks. We'll do some measurements with the guys, take their arm, hand, uh, height, weight, all that, and then uh, answer any questions they have. So you work, with the, you work with the big guys. Who works with the skill guys? Is that Blue? Yeah, that'll be Blue and Dean. Um, you know, they're, they're divided. You know, within the skill guys, there's, they're divided up. So we'll have some of those skill guys who are in the advanced group with Dean. Uh, we'll have some of them who are on the, the base team card. Uh, so coach Hess will be overseeing them, any skill guy who are, you know, a single leg specialty or return to play, uh, they'll be with coach blue. And then once we get into the field work with the, the speed, the change of direction, all that stuff, uh, blue plays a big role in that. Awesome. And we, we see a lot of former players coming back and I think, you know, it's a sign of a, a good program and a good strength finishing program. What have you seen from that? Do you have a role in training former players? How's that work? Is that just, you kind of pop in and you can set up a workout with you or. Or, or, or Coach Hess or Coach Blue, or, or what have you seen from that um, over the last couple of years? It's been a little bit weird just with COVID and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we didn't have much of a role in that last year. Um, so, you know, I don't have much of an answer for you there yet. I think we'll get a better sense of that this year because, um, you know, a lot of those guys kind of go off to Florida, California to train at various facilities. Uh, I got to work with my brother, Charlie, actually last year uh, before he got drafted. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, anytime we have a guy who's, uh, you know, not going anywhere to train, who's staying here, uh, we will absolutely work with them um, and get them ready to go. So we just, uh, we find time within our day uh, where we're not training the team, we're not meeting or anything like that. And uh, we'll set up workouts for them. Awesome. All right, let's get into you and kind of a little bit away from UNC. You do strongman competitions and you're into powerlifting. Um, yeah. What, I mean, those are two different things, right? I imagine. They are. Yeah. So let's, let's start with the, uh, with the powerlifting. What does that look like? What competitions are you entering? How are you training for it? Um, like what is powerlifting look like in the United States? Yeah. So powerlifting is just squat, bench press, and deadlift. Um, you get three attempts at each of them and it's just, the heaviest weight you can lift. And then there's judges watching all of them. You know, when you're squatting, there's judges walking, making sure that you're squatting to sufficient depth. There's a bunch of different little minute rules um, and things that can disqualify a lift. Um, and, and that's kind of what got me started in strength sports with powerlifting. Um, it's a sport that's very accessible. Um, it, it's, you know, simple to train for in terms of the equipment you need. Um, and it was kind of my first love when it came to training, just squat, bench, deadlift, the big <laughs> basics. Um, and uh, I, I started out competing in that for the first couple of years. Um, and then I, I branched out to strongman. And then strongman is the stuff you see on like the, the world's strongest man on TV, the guys lifting the Atlas stones and the logs and all that. Um, strongman is a lot more diverse in terms of the various events you have to do and the various types of lifts and implements you have to handle um you know there's a million different things you'll have to do in strongman um and it's a sport that is typically more suited to bigger guys taller guys um, whereas powerlifting you tend to see the best powerlifters are short they're the short squatty guys you know the 
five, you know, under six foot, because when it comes to some the simple movements like squat, bench press, or deadlift, it's typically advantageous to have a shorter range of motion. Uh, it's a very leverage based sport. Uh, whereas in strongman, there's such a myriad of different events, moving events, you know, um, you got to carry yoke, farmer carries, axle clean and press, log, um, sandbag carries, sandbag throws. I mean, it's uh, there's a million different things. Um, so being a bigger, taller, more well-rounded athlete um, kind of translates over to that sport more. So that's what drew me into that. Um, it was just a matter of finding a strongman gym um, yeah. because – Whereas, like I said, powerlifting, it's a more accessible sport. All you need is a barbell, a squat rack, and a bench to train for it. Well, with strongman, there's a ton of specialized equipment. And then, you know, you need someone who knows what they're doing to teach you how to do it all. Um, so I was lucky enough to find a gym here in Raleigh. It's called Spider Strength. And it's owned by a pro strongman who's uh, one America's strongest man. And um, I started training over there. And uh, those guys showed me the ropes and uh, kind of fell in love with it. So, all right, so powerlifting, where are you competing? Like, what's your schedule like? I mean, is this a thing where, like, you're trying to get to the Olympics or, like, just doing, like, local competitions? Or, I mean, I just have no concept of the, the scene, I guess. Right. So, with powerlifting and, and strongman included, typically what you'll do is you start by competing in just a, a low-level qualifier. So, this is going to be, like, a local meet. And uh, you can find one. You know, they're, they're hosted year-round. And uh, you can find them all around the country. Um, there's, they're oftentimes hosted here in Raleigh, where I live. Um, so you start by, by competing in a, in a you know, local show. And then uh, assuming that you, in powerlifting, put up a big enough total, which is the, the accumulation of your squat, bench, and deadlift added up, or in strongman, if you place high enough, well, then you qualify for a bigger competition. So then you'll be competing at a, a national level competition. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the national level competition, it's at a you know set date, one location, once a year. And uh, once you qualify for that, you train for it, you compete. And then, um, you know, in strongman, the top three, the guys in the podium, they'll advance up to a next level. Um, same thing in, in powerlifting. Um, and then you're getting into international level competitions. Um, and, and strongman is a sport where it is, it has a huge international presence. Um, so you climb the ranks high enough, you know, you're competing in qualifiers for world strongest man. And, uh, you know, then they just hosted that, um, or they just held world strongest man here, uh, a couple of days ago, actually. And you see guys from all over the world competing in that. So where are you right now? Are you, are you doing every year? What's your, cause I mean, I'm, I'm assuming during the season, it's tough to kind of really train for it or, or really compete. What's, uh, what's yeah, your it is. Like? so this whole past, uh, this whole past year and a half has been weird. Just, you know, um, pre COVID I had, uh, qualified for the Arnold, which is one of the, the bigger national level strongman competitions in Columbus, Ohio. That's where, you know, they hold all the big bodybuilding competitions and anything that's kind of falls under the realm of strength sports. Um, you'll see hosted at the Arnold. Uh, so I was all set and ready to compete in that. And then COVID hit. And then, you know, I've kind of just this whole past year, um, you know, it's been sketchy trying to find competitions and then obviously working around our schedule with football. So at, at this point in time, I, you know, I don't have any competitions scheduled right now. Um, I'm just training hard and trying to continue to get as, as strong as I can get. So, um, you know, when the, when the season ends and, you know, the world's kind of back to normal, then I'm ready to go. That's awesome. So uh, I'll be I'll be looking I'll be looking to compete most likely um, shortly after the season ends. I mean, are you looking to like do this? I mean, is your goal is obviously to be as best you can. Right? I mean, is this the thing where you're gonna really try to get in the international competitions and everything, or like where, what's the limit here? Like, I don't know. How, are you really good at the strongman competitions? Like, where where is this gonna take you? Yeah, I mean, I I have a pretty high ceiling in it. Um, I'm I'm still trying to figure out ultimately what I want to do. Um, you know, I. As I've grown this nutrition business that I do and kind of grown my social media and all, all the things like that, you know, um, one thing that I've learned is that uh, physique sells. And <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I've here lately, I've been kind of into the bodybuilding 
And, um, you know, that's kind of been a lot of what my training and, and nutrition has looked like. And because a lot of the people that I work with um, within my nutrition business, um, that's what they're after. Um, so kind of walking that talk and looking that part helps a lot with business. Um, and it helps a lot with growing social media presence. Um, so just between coaching at UNC and, and coaching with the nutrition business and, and all that, um, you know, I'm kind of figuring out what I ultimately want to pursue. All I know is right now, I'm just trying to push the envelope to see how big and strong I could humanly get. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll see what I can, uh, what I can do with that. With the what bodybuilding, is that just, is that just looking good? Is that all it is? Is like a model? You're essentially like a model. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't say model. Um, it's it's trying to, whereas strongman and power thing, it's trying to get as strong as possible, regardless of what you look like doing yeah. it. Um, bodybuilding is all about uh, putting on as much muscle as possible, regardless of how strong you are doing it, yeah. and uh, and being lean while you do it. You know, so it's it's get as add as much muscle tissue as you can with as little body fat as possible. And then if you're preparing for a bodybuilding show, you know, you spend your off season growing, getting bigger, adding muscle, and then you spend, uh, you know, the in season the prepping for the bodybuilding show, dieting down and, and uh, dieting all that body fat off to reveal the physique underneath. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of things that I wanted to ask about, like your Instagrams is pretty interesting because you'll show your, your changes in body and you can change your body in, in a week or two, just based on what you eat and how you work out. Um, this is pretty crazy. Give them what's your Instagram? We'll give you a follow. Try to get as many people to follow you. Yeah, it's uh, what the heck 71, or you That's can right. just let John Hack. My name's just spelled J O N, there's no H in it. And uh, you could definitely see John's like you know, change in physique and, and his gaining. And he gives a lot of tips about different ways to train and lifts and form, and, and definitely a lot of nutrition stuff, too. And you do a lot of like, um, I guess, ask me anything type deals, QA type situations as well, which are interesting. Yep, I do uh, do a weekly QA on the Instagram and uh. I try to, you know, just work, being a strength and conditioning coach and, uh, but also being someone who's involved in the fitness industry, you know, the fitness industry is, is filled with a lot of misinformation. Um, so I try to uh, kind of be a voice that's, that's bringing some good knowledge uh, and information um, to that side of things. So how much could you gain? How much weight could you gain in one week? Uh, well, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to see how much weight I could gain in one week. I mean, that's that it kind of goes against the purpose yeah. of anything I'd be trying to do. You know, anytime that uh, someone's trying to lose body fat or, or gain muscle, I try to do it slowly. Um, you know, if you're trying to gain muscle, if you just try to gain five pounds every week, you'll probably be gaining four and a half pounds of fat and then uh, maybe yeah, yeah. a little bit of muscle with it. Um, so it, it's more about playing the slow game. Um, now, I mean, how much could I put on uh, in, a, in a healthy way? I guess is what I'm asking. Like if you, yeah, were to so play. ideally I'm shooting the game, you know, one to two pounds a week. Okay. Um, and, and you'll see a lot of guys who say, oh, I gained 10 pounds in two weeks. The majority of the time, that kind of weight you're gaining or losing is water weight. Yeah. Uh, muscle glycogen weight, things like that. When it comes to the actual muscle tissue or body fat, those things accrue and, and fall off at a much slower rate. Um, so like I said, I'm shooting to gain about two pounds a week right now. We, we call that dirty bulk, right? Isn't that dirty weight or something like that? Yeah. That's the, uh, that's the gain weight at all costs. Yeah. Everything in sight, just, just see that scale move. A little terminology um, there. And then yeah. how much could you lose? Like if you were looking to lose, to, to lean out, cut out a little bit in a week or so and do it in a healthy way, like, could you lose 10? I mean, it's just a lot of cardio. Is that kind of cardio and then, and, and then controlling your diet in a different way to kind of get there? Component of letting the diet do the legwork when it comes to losing weight. I mean, when it, when someone's trying to lose body fat, get leaner, uh, there's two parts of the equation and most people just focus on one of them. The two parts of the equation are, you need to lose body fat, but you also need to retain muscle mass. Uh, and when you're in a calorie deficit, meaning you are eating, you're consuming fewer calories than you are burning throughout the day. You need a calorie deficit to lose weight, right? It's just the laws of thermodynamics right there. Well, 
your body doesn't nef- necessarily differentiate between does, is it going to let go of body fat or is it going to let go of muscle tissue? Um, you want to do everything you can to hold on to as much muscle mass as possible while losing body fat. Because, you know, at the end of the day, when you lose all that body fat, you want to have the muscle underneath to show for it. And then carrying more muscle mass while you diet is going to help your metabolism stay elevated, meaning you'll be burning more calories at rest. Uh, so when people diet and try to lose weight, I very, very strongly recommend doing it slowly. Again, try to sh- shooting for losing one to two pounds a week tops. That way you can really help facilitate your body losing body fat, but holding on to muscle tissue. And at the same time, you need to be hitting the weight room hard because that's going to be sending that signal to your body. Hey, we need to keep this muscle mass. Okay? It's, we're using it. Um, your body's going to adapt to the stresses placed upon it. So if you're lifting, that's sending that signal to your body. Hey, let's keep this muscle mass in spite of the fact we're in a calorie deficit. Um, so I like to limit cardio as much as you can, because, uh, when you do a ton of cardio, you're kind of sending the signal to your body. Hey, this is a big stress we're putting on our body. All this heavy muscle we're carrying is weighing us down. Let's get rid of this. Um, so cardio, cardio is something that, you know, probably does need to come into play for most people at some point. However, for most people, I'll just, I'll just have them walk throughout the day, as opposed to traditional cardio, like getting running on the treadmill or the elliptical. Um, I'll have people take several 10 minute walks throughout the day. Um, you know, that step count is going to add up and then it's something that's easy for people to do. You know, you don't have to shower and change your clothes after a 10 minute walk you can do it at any time of day it's not a a big inconvenience it's not hard on your joints uh but when you're taking three to five 10 minute walks throughout the day you know all that physical activity adds up and uh that's going to help you know burn those calories um and and you're doing so in a way that's going to help preserve all that muscle mass very interesting. Good advice there for sure. Um, okay. Well, let's get out of here with uh, a couple more things. Really appreciate your time, John. Um, I think for those who have stayed and listened to this, um, this podcast, I appreciate a lot of the insight and a little treat here. If you could name, you've been working with the players, you've seen all the players now, you've got the freshmen as well. If you could give us a name or two of guys that you've been really impressed with um, that are enrolled at UNC and their bodies and how they've worked out um, over the last year or two, or even some freshmen that you're really excited about, what are some guys that fans should know strength conditioning wise have really made a big leap or really impressed and um, in how they approach the strength conditioning program at Carolina? A lot of them. I'll give you uh, I'll give you three guys who are, who have been in the program for a little bit and then I'll give you one freshman. Uh, as far as some of the guys who have been here for a little bit, who have made some big strides here, especially this past off season have been Des Evans, uh, awesome Richards and Chris Collins. Um, those are some guys who I'm really excited to see what they do this season. Uh, they've, they've come a long way. Um, and then one, one freshman, I will say power Eccles. Um, mm, okay. He has been absolutely incredible. He's one of those guys who we, we see what he's doing and we know he's about to be something special. That's linebacker power Eccles, true freshman. I thought you were going to say Javari Ritzy. We've heard some, some crazy things about him. Uh, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Ritzy's a freak. Yeah, he is a freak. He, I mean, from day one of, of having him in the program, you know, he, he's different. Um, the, uh, these recruiting classes we've brought in this year and last year, they, uh, they look a lot different than the ones we were bringing in when I was a player. There you have so, it. So, uh, that's yeah. a, that's a great way to, to end things. And I'm sure, yeah, fans are excited about Desmond Evans and, Awesome Richard starting left tackle. Um, and Chris Collins is a big chance to show what he can do as an outside linebacker for UNC. John, that was awesome. Uh, we kind of were all over the place with a lot of different topics, but that's why I wanted to bring you on because I think you have a very unique uh, lifestyle, unique role for UNC and a, a unique way of approaching strength conditioning um, and your kind of journey through your different kind of interests. Uh, thanks so much, man. All right, we'll see you. Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, It's the Inside Carolina Podcast brought to you by Johnny T-Shirt and johnnytshirt.com.